Hi you, King here, and this is if DC characters were in the universe of Star Wars. I hope you enjoy it, and may the force be with you. My son Kal-El, yes, that is your true name. I hope this message reaches you well. I am your father, Jor-El, and you are originally from a long since destroyed planet named Krypton. It, along with most of our people, unfortunately died once its kryptonite-enriched core became too unstable and exploded. Luckily for you, my son, I was able to design a craft with warp drive potential that was small enough to escape all of the blasting debris. And I had it set to transport you to Tatooine, where hopefully you would have been found by good enough people to not just raise you, but teach you to be a kind person. Since you see Kal-El, you're not just a normal being. It is said that the Dark Lord Palpatine once manipulated enough metachlorians to create life, that life became a great Jedi known as Anakin Skywalker that then later on became a powerful Sith known as Darth Vader. And I was able to uncover the secrets of how he did it and through Kryptonian technology repeat the process by which making you. Which means Kal-El, you are highly in tune with the force and by adulthood, could be the most powerful force user that ever existed. And to be able to assist you beyond the grave, I've had some calculations done on what abilities you could manifest through the force. Abilities such as invulnerability, force speed, being able to crush and lift things with the force, obviously, but even potentially flight. And it is said that few force users possess the ability to manipulate the temperature of objects and their environment. So in that regard, I believe that you would be able to freeze or melt things just through sheer will alone and by facing them. And with all of these abilities, my son, you would be considered a god amongst men. Some might even say a Superman. But I'm telling you all of this not to inflate your ego because at the end of the day, you are not a god. I don't know what type of man you've become by the time this message reaches you but I'm hoping that you have used the force to become a symbol of hope. That you walk the path of a Jedi, supporting people, saving them, inspiring them to reach great heights so that they one day might be like you. When your mother and I birthed you, we wanted you to one day be able to save Krypton, but it was too late for that. But it's not too late for the rest of the universe. So be the symbol of hope in the vast void that is space. Save them, my son. Be there, Superman. Oh, by the way, you, like most Kryptonians, have a rare allergy called kryptonite poisoning born off of the unique radiation that kryptonite gives off. Since kryptonite and rich fumes would burst from the ground, being signs of Krypton's core becoming unstable, this going on for many centuries, making it so where normal life forms would have high immunity to the radiation that kryptonite gives off. Us Kryptonians, unfortunately, because of kryptonite poisoning, would not and become deathly ill when in the presence of them. This all to just say, regardless of how powerful you become with the force, keep cautious and keep a lookout because there will still exist things that will be able to hurt you. Stay safe, my son. Master Bruce, how has your trip to Coruscant been faring you? It's been some time now since you've last contacted the rest of the team. And I couldn't help but remember that Coruscant was one of the many locations you traveled to to train after your parents' untimely death at the hands of that barbaric crook. Politicians they were, very rich and very kind. As you know, Master Bruce was a very rare combination to be in that line of work. They attracted all kinds of eyes, including the bad ones. The same type of bad that after they passed, turned Gotham into a grimy cesspool of crime and villainy. And I was just a humble servant, but even I could see that something within you broke, Master Bruce, and you didn't know how to cope with their loss. You thought, for things to truly change for the better, you'd have to change. So you went on a decade-long sabbatical to begin learning from various different people around the galaxy. 
whether it was places of high culture and status where you studied under scientists and politicians like your parents, or jungles filled with savage and wild creatures where you trained under bounty hunters to learn how to hunt like them, or the grimy slums of cities that were gang-ridden where you honed your detective skills to be able to solve even the most deadliest of cases. You left a broken boy, but came back as something else, something new, something powerful. And it's true, you weren't force sensitive, so you could never become something akin to a Jedi. But through your training with Mandalorians, you found ways to keep up with them and could even take on a Sith. And you told me once you returned about how in your studies you found out about a long since extinct ancient creature that once struck fear into the hearts of all men. You wanted to adopt this creature's name as a moniker to be able to strike fear into the hearts of all criminals, every single one. And not just that, but you somehow got your hands on Mandalorian armor, which you had your personal engineer, Lucius Fox, custom forge into being a similar shape to this creature. You decided to call yourself the Batman. And with all the resources from Wayne Technologies, you went on a one-man crusade across the galaxy to make it much more safe. And this inspired people to start following you, like a rebel organization against crime and tyranny. It was like a beacon of hope in the darkness. You even managed to get your hands on the Darksaber and have used it since to take down any Sith foolish enough to cross your path. And even though, yes, Master Bruce, your memory is top notch, you don't need me reminding you of all of this. I still feel the need to restate all of it to simply put it like this. The universe is better with you in it, not without you. So whatever you're doing in Coruscant that's so important, please don't throw away your life over it. I simply can't bury another Wayne. Best wishes, your servant, Alfred Pennyworth. Hey, Barry, it's your apprentice, Wally. I could really use you right now, big guy. I don't know where you're at. All I got to go on is all the stuff you told me before you disappeared. You once told me when you were a youngling, a Sith in yellow appeared out of nowhere and slashed down both your parents with their red lightsaber. This particular Sith was known for being able to move faster than what most Jedis could even blink, let alone swing their lightsaber, so they were able to escape with doing such a horrible misdeed to you. Then adopted by the Jedi Master, Jay Garrick, who was able to sense great force potential in you. With Jay being the only other force user with the same unique force speed abilities similar to that of the Sith in yellow. So you asked him to train you in the art of force speed so that you may one day not just avenge your parents' death, but find out why the Sith in yellow targeted them in the first place. Jay commanded your motivation, but warned you just the same that most Jedis end up losing their lives attempting this type of training because they just weren't good enough. But you said you didn't care because finding out the truth was more important than just self-preservation. Thus began your many years training under Jay, where you learn not just to harness the Force, but to hone your latent talents for Force speed, as well as gain the ability to generate and shoot out Force lightning, which is an ability rare for Jedi to even be able to do. Normally, it's a power coveted and used primarily by the Sith. So you were already leagues above your peers. Then there was only one last test remaining. You had to be struck by lightning to become truly in tune with force speed. And I know, when you had told me this, I still couldn't believe the seriousness on your face. But you somehow managed to survive and became known as the fastest Jedi alive, the Scarlet Comet, the Flash, which was Jay's nickname that you inherited to become your moniker. But then the Sith in Yellow reappeared to cause chaos and trouble for everyone. He just began killing every single person in sight until you and Jay managed to take him down with everything you had. And when you finally get to ask him why he did all those horrible things to you when you were a youngling, he reveals that when he was young, all he wanted to do was access the world between worlds, 
which is something that goes beyond the force and allows force users to traverse time itself. He wanted that power for himself so bad that he started having visions, visions of the future, showing to him that he would one day finally achieve his dream. But it would only be possible through him being united with another equally powerful force speed user. And he saw it in his visions. That other powerful force speed user ended up being you, Barry or at least an alternate future version of you. And he also revealed that he couldn't wait that long for you to naturally grow into those powers. So he gave you the motivation to want to get those powers as soon as possible by giving you someone to have a vendetta against. Well, he killed your parents, Barry. That sick monster did it for his own gains. And then he managed to escape you guys declaring as he ran off that the next time he saw you Barry that you would open the gate for him and many years would go by since then allowing you to do many of things like rekindle your secret relationship with my cousin Iris while gaining a new apprentice to train in the art of force speed me then a powerful lightning storm appeared then you ran off and disappeared Jay theorizes that you indeed went into the world between worlds with the Sith in yellow to have a final battle to decide the fate of the entire universe, which as crazy as that sounds, if that ends up being the case, I do hope you win, Barry. I hope you win and that you come back to us, not just for me and Jay, but for Iris. She misses you dearly, and she's always been like your lightning rod. No matter how far you go, you always return to her. So run, Barry. Run back to Iris and to us. Jay says that the world between worlds is theorized to be an intersection between all events throughout all space and time. So if that's the case, even if I don't know how to send you this message, if you're there, then it's likely you've already gotten it. And if that's so, then return soon, Barry, because I truly want to see who is the fastest Jedi alive. Wally out. If you like this video, then like, share, subscribe, and follow, and ring that notification bell for more like it.